Welcome to Soft Papers channel. My name is uh, Mr. Godfrey uh, M. I am an experienced uh, a teacher with Cambridge uh, International Curricula. Uh, today I will be solving a uh, science uh, paper, Cambridge Primary Checkpoint. Uh, paper is uh, paper 2 uh, of October 20. 18. And if you have not uh, already subscribed to my channel, please click the subscription button below and hit the bell icon below. This way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Uh, let's get started. Question number one. Yusef investigates bouncy objects. Um, he looked at the apparatus, uh, sorry, look at the apparatus he uses. You can see there's a string here. Then there's a mass. Of course, this is uh, uh, a return stand. Okay. Um, the spring stretches when the mass is added. What, but A, what unit is used to measure mass? Because the unit that is used to measure mass is a, a kilogram the unit for measuring mass is kilogram you can write in short as kg uh, that is acceptable um, part b draw an arrow draw an arrow on the diagram to show the direction of gravity Gravity is the pull of gravity on the mass. So how will the gravity uh, pull the mass? Of course, gravity will pull the mass downwards. So that's the arrow you need to draw right there to show that the pull of gravity on the mass is downwards. Let's proceed to question number two. Lily adds... Uh, separate samples of uh, solids to water. She stirs the solids and water to see if the solid uh, will dissolve. Here are our results. Uh, we have um, five solids here. Chalk, copper carbonate, copper sulfate, salt, we have sugar. Uh, the color of these solids are listed uh, down here. Um, which one dissolves? Um, does the solid dissolves? Chalk does not dissolve, no. Uh, copper, carbon does not dissolve, but the rest, copper sulfate, salt and sugar will dissolve. Um, the color of solution, of course, uh, no solution is formed when chalk and copper carbon does not dissolve. Uh, for copper sulfate, the solution is blue. Uh, for both water and sugar is colorless. Um, but air, Complete the sentences. Sugar dissolves in water because water is dash. Water is referred to as a solvent. Um, liquid that other um, solutes will dissolve is usually called a solvent. Right? Of course, you know that uh, a solute plus a solvent usually give us a solution. Okay. Chalk does not dissolve because it is insoluble. Chalk is insoluble in water. That's why it will not dissolve. Uh, part B. Part B. Copper sulfate is a blue solid. It dissolves in water. What color solution does it form? What color solution does it form? Uh, of course we are given here the color of the solution formed by the solution of copper sulfate is blue. It forms a blue solution. Okay. Uh, part C. Uh, does salt, sorry, salt dissolves in water to form a salt solution. What is the name of the solute in salt solution. Of course, 
the solute is basically the salt. It is the one which dissolves in water. Solute is that which will dissolve in water. So in this case, salt is the, solu uh, the solute. Remember, I've indicated to you that um, a solute plus a solvent will give us a solution. So it is the solute which dissolves in the solvent uh, so that we obtain a solution. So if salt dissolves in water, then salt is the uh, solute. As we continue to question number three, I'd like to um, say to you that it's great you're watching uh, this video. Uh, but remember, uh, practice, practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And I encourage you to practice solving these uh, kind of questions. Uh, work out the questions yourself. Uh, this will give you practice and will build your muscle. Uh, you may get these same papers that I'm solving right here. Um, on this website here, solved papers, solvedpapers.co.uk. Uh, this is a very resourceable website. I would like you to uh, have a look at it. Of course, I can help you with, with that. Uh, this is the website, uh, Soft Papers. Of course, very resourceful. You can go through, through it. Uh, of course, uh, you need to come to a checkpoint primary, go to our science, our past papers, uh, right there. Uh, click that one and uh, you will be um, taken to this page here, whereby you can get papers, uh, checkpoint primary uh, science papers for 2019, 2018, 2017, uh, 2016 and 2015. Of course, you could ask your parents, your dad, your mom to help you with this. Of course, um, you will need to, uh, they will need to spend a little bit of some uh, money to get the papers. You can go to get all the papers at a discount. Of course, um, the prices are listed there for 2019, 2018, 2017, 2016, uh, 26, uh, 2015. Or you can get all of them uh, together, 2018, 2019, all the way to 2017. Uh, now that out of the way, uh, let's continue with question number three. Let's continue with question number three. Gabriela collects litter around our school. You can see um, this litter there. Of course, we have drinky cans there. Um, this is a responsible uh, girl. Part A of three, Gabriela wants to measure how much litter she, co uh, she has collected. What does she, what does she measure? Circle the correct answer. Of course, our question is she wants to know how much, to measure how much litter she has collected. And therefore, the question is how much, what does she measure? Of course, she measures the mass of the litter. She needs to measure the mass of the litter, not the color of the litter. The color of the litter will not get her to know how much litter she has collected, not the shape, neither the type, nor where she found the litter. She needs to measure the mass of the litter. Okay, of course, she needs to use um, balance uh, to do that measurement uh, of the litter. Part B, Gabriela's class start a litter campaign she puts posters up and they put posters up and they get new litter bins uh, the litter campaign is successful uh, that's very uh, good explain how they know the litter campaign has been successful uh, successful of course um, they will know of course they are doing this in uh, in their school so they will know that the litter campaign has been successful if students uh, start throwing uh, their litter into the new litter bins. So students, um, are throwing. Or oh, let me put the use the word 
uh, students start throwing a litter into the beans. That is the um, the standard for knowing how successful their campaign has been. That is quite useful. Um, uh, Gabriella has really influenced, influenced our class, and that is a good, responsible girl. Part C of number three. Gabriella looks at the things in the mixed uh, litter. She counts them and makes a tally uh, chart. Uh, there are food packets, there are papers, plastic bottles, straws and tissues. And um, this is um, a tally that, um, of course, fep uh, food packets are 23. Uh, papers, we need to complete that, and bl uh, plastic bottles. Straws are total of 12, tissues are 20. Complete uh, the sentences. Uh, the food, I'm uh, sorry, the total for paper is, of course, uh, each one of these bunches, you can uh, check for food packages. We have five bunch, uh, bunches uh, that are tied. So this is 5, 10, uh, 15, 20, 23, what you got here. Uh, for papers, then therefore it is uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, and this is 4. So it's going to be 24. That's what we write here. 24. Um, the total for plastic bottle is. Plastic bottle is 5, 10, 15, 17. You plus 2. Uh, therefore, this is 17. Uh, right. Uh, we write it over there. Um, the lowest number is. Uh, of course, I can see straws, which are basically uh, 12. So the lowest number is for straw. That is the lowest litter that will be collected. Uh, part D, Gabriela wants to measure how much litter she has collected. She thinks that counting the number of things in the mixed litter is not a fair test. Explain why this is not a fair test. Um, of course, the litter she is collecting is of different sizes. So, um, so the litter is of different sizes. Is of different uh, sizes. Therefore, that cannot be a fair test by just counting. Uh, very well. Question number four. Materials have specific properties. Draw a line between each. Draw a line between each material and the correct property of the material. We have the material, we have the property in that uh, row there. So we need to uh, draw a line. Uh, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a gas. So what is the property of carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is a colorless gas. Draw a line from there to colorless gas. Of course, carbon dioxide is the gas that we breathe out. And of course, I'm sure you can see there's no color. Uh, what about gas gasoline? Is gasoline a white solid? Is it a flammable liquid? Is it Does it have a melting point of zero? Is it a silver liquid? Does it attract magnets or pink? I will go for a flammable uh, liquid. So gasoline is... A flame uh, liquid. Gasoline is uh, petrol, and you know how petrol is very flammable. Uh, mercury. Uh, mercury is um, a liquid, so a metal, and you know that the color of metals is silvery. So mercury is a silvery liquid. Uh, steel um, is a metal. And it's a magnetic metal, and therefore it is attracted to a magnet. Water um, has a melting point of zero. When water is in form of solid ice, the melting point is uh, uh, is zero uh, right there. So 
we have uh, connected uh, the material with this correct uh, property. Question number five. Uh, Carlos inve uh, investigates a food chain. He finds this information on the internet. Up it eat roses, birds eat beetles, beetles eat up it, roses are producers. Write down the food chain. You see this information. Of course, um, producers are those which make their own food. So we start with the roses, which are producers. Uh, roses are eaten uh, by aphids. Roses are eaten by aphids. And aphids are eaten by beetles. So beetles rely on aphids. And what eats beetles is birds. So birds are on top of the food chain uh, right there. Part B. Part B. One organism in this food chain is both a predator and a prey. A predator is one which feeds on the others. And um, what is the name of this organi uh, organism? Of course, uh, you can see right here um, that uh, beetles heat um, a pit. And um, you can see that uh, beetles are eaten by uh, birds. So uh, beetles are both a predator and a prey. A prey, it is eaten by the birds, and at the same time, it heats up uh, aphids, right? So beetles, um, a beetle is a predator because it heats aphids, and it is a prey because it is eaten by birds. So beetle is um, beetle is both a predator and a prey. Very well. Um, question number six. Um, before I do question number six, I also want to uh, let you know that I also do uh, online classes. I do online classes uh, with students from all over the world. I have a website by the name SP Academy dot co dot uk uh, this website right here uh, this is a website uh, that you can find a tutor can uh, find whatever what courses you need and um, it is a good website i do have our online classes here of course i would like you to have a uh, get some time and go through the student guide and um, uh, we have very good uh, uh, comments from teachers. We also, um, my name is Godfrey, uh, right there. Um, I will require you to find time and log in or sign up uh, right there, and then you can request for some tuition, which I would be glad to assist in. That be said, uh, Let's continue with question number six. Let's continue with question number six. Here are some four electrical circuits. Here are some four electrical circuits. We have um, four of them there with different components, battery, uh, bulb, switch, and of course connected wires. How many lamps in total will light up okay how many lamps will light up lamps that will light up will be lamps that have got complete uh, circuit uh, for example uh, this uh, bulb here will light up the switch is on uh, this one uh, the second circuit the switch is open right there so that bulb will not light 
this bulb will not light uh, because there is no cell in this circuit so no energy uh, no source of power uh, this bulb will light because there is a but uh, there is a cell and the switch is closed and therefore that bulb will light so um, only two bulbs will light a circle right that part b part b uh, draw a circuit simple for a cell of course i hope you know that a cell looks like this one long line two parallel lines one is long the other is uh, short of course the long line i hope you know this is the positive terminal of the cell the short line is the negative terminal of the cell but of course you don't need to show that you just need to sh draw the symbol of a cell the symbol of a cell uh, looks uh, like that of course uh, part c uh, lily puts different objects in this electrical circuit of course we have the cell we have the bulb then the object um, predict what will happen if the object is a good conductor if it's a good conductor then the lamp uh, or the bulb the lamp will light up will light up I'll predict what will happen if the object is a bad conductor of course if it's a bad conductor electricity will not flow through a bad conductor or an insulator and for that matter uh, there's no elect there will be no electricity in the in the lamp therefore the lamp will not light up the lamp is just an indicator to us that electricity is flowing in the circuit uh, when it lights up there's no other way for us to know electricity flowing um, if we didn't have a bulb the other other way is just to have uh, an ammeter uh, which measures electricity but um, for an indication that electricity is flowing in the circuit we need a, a lamp part d lily makes this circuit lily wants to make the lamp brighter okay she needs the lamp to be much brighter which electrical circuit should she make uh, we need to tick take the box next to the correct circuit uh, the first circuit we have two bulbs uh, sharing the same power source and therefore each of these bulbs will use be using half of the energy supplied by the cell so the bulbs will not be brighter actually they will be dimmer um, in the second um, box in the second circuit uh, the bulbs will be actually brighter because we have more uh, cells we have uh, one more cell so this bulb will be much brighter because it is using um, it is using more energy it's be supplied with uh, with more energy in circuit number three this bulb will not light because you can see the cells are connected um, uh, wrong of course you connect a cell uh, positive to negative but the way these ones are connected we have a negative there we have a positive and then another positive and then negative so this is not going to light at all um, the second the, the fourth circuit this bulb will not be brighter because it is um, same as the circuit that Lily had uh, made uh, up there and then lastly um, this will also this bulb will not be brighter because they are sharing uh, power so only one circuit that will have a bulb that is more brighter uh, which is uh, right here question number seven uh, Chen uh, draws a picture of the earth and rays of sun uh, rays of sunlight he writes uh, the letters w x y and z on the earth uh, we have the rays of sunlight we have the earth we have w z y and z and x sorry uh, question is which letters show the places on earth where it is day 
and where it is night. Put the letters in the table. Of course, uh, it is day at um, it is day at W and Z because that is where the light is falling. It is night at X and uh, Y. So W and Z is day. X and Y it is at night. Okay, can uh, clearly see that. Part B, Chen draws a diagram to show the position of the sun and earth. This is Chen's uh, diagram. Okay, he's showing the position of the earth and the sun. Okay, draw the position of the earth six months later. Of course, six months later, the earth will be on the opposite side where it is. Remember, um, the earth takes one year to orbit the sun. The earth takes one year to orbit the sun. So uh, six months, that's half a year, right? Six months, uh, this, is, um, uh, this is half a year. And therefore, it will be halfway around the Earth. So it will be in the opposite direction right here. Uh, so this is the new position of the Earth after six, after six months. Question number eight. Mia hits a substance. Heat is applying uh, heat. Uh, she measures the temperature of the substance every minute. Here is a line graph of Mia's result, right? We have the uh, we have a line graph temperature in degrees on the y-axis, time in minutes on the x-axis. Um, so there is Mia's uh, graph. Name the apparatus Mia uses to measure temperature. We usually use um, a thermometer to measure temperature. Of course, I'm sure you are conversant with this, especially uh, these times of COVID. Uh, uh, thermometers are be on high demand. Uh, you use thermometer to measure temperature. I'm sure you have also gone to hospital and gotten your temperature. Uh, the nurse uh, gets your temperature right there. Therefore, they sh she uses a thermometer, different types of thermometer, digital and stuff. Part B, complete the sentence above, sorry, complete the sentence about the pattern, about the pattern in the results. As the time increased, the temperature, of course, you can see as time increased here, as the time increased, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and so forth, the temperature was increasing, um, uh, the increase of the uh, temperature was constant. Uh, but after the fifth minute, the temperature remains constant, right? The temperature remains constant at 45 uh, degrees Celsius all the way to the eighth minute. So that's what you're supposed to uh, describe. You're told to complete the sentence about the patterns in the results as the temperature increases, uh, as, the, um, as the time increases. Uh, you can say that the temperature increases, uh, of course, until the fifth minute, then uh, stays the same, stays the same, uh, the same basically means constant, stays constant after five minutes. After five minutes, it remains constant. So we have this. We have um, shown how we have described the patterns in um, Mia's uh, results. Question number nine: Priya finds a diagram on the internet. It shows a parent uh, plant making new plants. Parent. 
plant, make new plants. What is this life process called? Of course, when you're making new, you are reproducing. So this is reproduction. This is a reproduction. Reproduction right there. can see uh, the shoot is in the soil and then it sprouts a new plant uh, from the soil. So that is reproduction. Question number 10. Pierre is investigating if materials are transparent or opaque. Here is the, the apparatus he is uses, he's using. Uh, Pierre has instructions to test each material test each material okay um they are not in the correct uh, order so um, a is turn the light source on and read the light meter we of course we have um we have the material here we have light meter here so if the material is transparent, then some light will go through uh, to the light meter, and the light meter will do will do will give us some will give Pierre some reading. If the material is opaque, then light will not go through, and therefore none will arrive at the light meter. Light meter will have zero uh, reading. Light meter will have zero reading. So we are told light uh, air turn the light source on and read the light meter b select the material and place it between the light source and light uh, meter c turn the light source off and record the uh, the results and then lastly collect the light source and light meter we are told to put each letter in the correct order in the table, um, we need to put the first letter, first instruction, and the last instruction. So the last, the first instruction is to collect the light source, pick up the light source. So D should be the first. Pick up, collect the light source and the light meter. Then secondly, uh, select the material and place it between the light source and the light meter. B goes second. Third, we need a pure needs to turn off the light source and read uh, the light meter. Goes third air. And then lastly, uh, turn the light source off and record the results. C is last. So uh, these are the order of the instructions uh, in which Pierre is supposed to uh, follow to be able to um, determine the transparency of the opaqueness of the object of the materials that he is investigating. Part B of uh, question 10. Look at Pierre results. Look at his results here. We have the light meter readings, uh, 0 to 120. And the materials are from A to uh, to E, basically five materials. Which sentence are true? Tick the box next to the correct uh, to the two correct sentences. Um, we have uh, all materials allow light to pass through. Um, of course, uh, that is not true because some materials are opaque. None of the materials allows light to pass through. Um, that is not true because uh, we can see that uh, a material A, B, C, and E have got some uh, meet light meter readings, meaning that uh, light went through. It's only D which was opaque, which light did not pass through. Um, then the next one material is opaque, and of course that is correct. That material is D. 
can see D has got null reading on the meter read, uh, meter, a light meter reading, and therefore it is opaque. Uh, three materials let through most uh, light. Three materials let most light through. Um, can check that. They've got them uh, material A, uh, material B, C, and E. I've got uh, the most light through, so there are three, and uh, that happens to be correct. Three, okay. Uh, B, C, and E, that is correct. Then two materials are opaque. We only have one material, which is opaque, which is D. Uh, two materials let most light through. It's not two, it is three. Therefore, this is also not uh, correct. So we have ticked the two boxes, which... Um, Correct. It's supposed to teach two boxes which the sentences are correct uh, for the observation or for the results of Pierre uh, right there. Question number 11. Oliver finds a picture on the internet. It shows an insect uh, moving from one flower to the other, another flower. Okay, the insect is right there. We have flower A. And of course, we have flower 1 and flower 2. What happens at A? A is this point right there. So um, at A, the insect collects uh, pollen uh, grains. The insect will collect pollen grains. Okay. And pollen grains will be from that part A, which is the male organ, which is the male organ of the flower. Okay, uh, part B, part B, what happens at B? What happens at B? So the insect will transfer the pollen. Uh, to part B. So pollen is transferred pollen is transferred to the female part of the flower part of the flower female part of the flower. Of course I'm sure you know uh, this is called uh, pollination. Very well. Number 12, Aiko, is, Aiko hits a tuning fork on a desk, right? She puts the end of the tuning fork into a beaker of water. Of course, when the tuning fork is hit on the desk, it will vibrate. Okay, vibrates when it is hit. Then, of course, she places uh, the tuning fork into a beaker of water. Explain what happens to the water in the beaker. Complete the sentences. Uh, the tuning fork is vibrating, so it will cause the water in the beaker to start uh, vibrating. So the water in the beaker vibrates. Um, this is because the tuning fork is vibrating. This is because the tuning fork, the tuning fork is vibrating. So the tuning fork will transfer its vibration into the water and cause the water to start vibrating as well. Uh, part B, describe how Aiko can increase what happens to the water, how Aiko can increase the vibration of water. So um, this can only happen if um the tuning fork is vibrating more so fi by vibrating the tuning fork harder by vibrating the tuning fork more harder of course by heating it harder on the desk uh top here is question 13 here is a table of melting points and boiling points. Our melting points of materials A, B, C, 
D and E. Uh, part A. Which two materials have a melting point above the melt uh, the melting point of water? Of course, the melting point of water is zero. Water melts at uh, zero degrees Celsius. So, which two materials have melting point above the melting point of water? Of course, uh, this should be material C, which has got a melting point of uh, 45 and material D, which is a melting point of 10. So both C and D will have a melting point higher than the melting point of water, which is at zero degrees. Part B, part B, which material is water? Which material is water? Water boils at, um, I mean, water boil, uh, melts at zero degrees and boils at 100 degrees. So the material which is water is material E. Of course, water does not boil at uh, a temperature of uh, 103, although, of course, this B has got melting point of zero. Okay. We are talking about the melting point of water at a pure water. That is, uh, okay. Uh, part C. The room temperature in a laboratory is 25 degrees Celsius. Which material is a solid in the laboratory? Choose A, B, C, D, or E from the table. Which material is a solid at uh, 25 degrees Celsius in the room temperature? Okay, so the material just happens to be C because C is um, got a melting point of zero degrees. D will have melted because the temperature of the laboratory is 20 degrees, 25 degrees, and the melting point of D will be 10. And also uh, E, B, and A. A has got a very low melting point, which is minus 60. So they will all be in liquid form, except with the exception of um, uh, material C. So C will be right there. Part D, the room temperature in the laboratory is 25. You're told that. Which material is a gas in the laboratory? Uh, choose uh, from the materials there. So you can see that um, the boiling point of air is 10 degrees Celsius, but the boiling point of the rest is way above 25. So 10 is uh, less than uh, 25 degrees Celsius, and therefore uh, air, which melts at minus uh, 60, will um, boil at 10 degrees, so at 25 degrees, it will be in gaseous state, or it will be a gas. So A will be a gas in the laboratory at that temperature of 25 degrees. Uh, question number 14. Five friends, five friends, jumps in the air. You can see right there. Explain why it looks like there are 10 friends in the picture. Because you can see uh, this is water. So these five friends who are standing on the land, uh, they have their image reflected. They have their images as a reflection in the, in the water. So sunlight, of course, in this case, you have, um, uh, of course, we assume it is going to be the day. So we will have sunlight is reflected, is reflected by the, by the water. Of course, the sunlight eats the, uh, the friends, then it comes back to uh, the water. And therefore, this is a reflection. This is a reflection of these friends. So this is a reflection of this girl. I hope it's a girl. So it's due to reflection. Okay. Question 15. Carlos investigates how temperature affects the growth of tomatoes. In his investigation, he put some tomato seed in soil. He adds water to the seed 
keeps the seed at different temperatures, measures the height of the tomatoes plant after 30 days. What, that is part A, what does Carlos use to measure the volume of water accurately, volume of water accurately, right? Which measuring instrument? Of course, uh, the best measuring instrument among all these is a measuring cylinder because it has got uh, graduation. Of course, Beak has got graduation as well, but uh, measuring cylinder is the one which is used to measure uh, volume. Measuring jug, measuring scale is for measuring mass, measuring spoon, um, you do not measure volume. Of course, jug has no graduation beaker, it's just for all the content of water. Okay, so measure a cylinder will measure the volume of water accurately for Carlos. Part B here are his um, our results. We have the height in centimeters, and we have temperature in degrees, of course starting from 10 degrees to 40, 40 degrees, and the height uh, uh, right there. Uh, complete the sentence about the graph. When the temperature is 10 degrees, the height of the plant is, of course, 10 is here, uh, the height of the plant would be 6, would be 6 uh, centimeters. Okay. Then, when the temperature is 40, the height of the plant is come to 40 come to 40 then the height will be uh, 10 centimeters the height will be 10 centimeters right there then the difference in height between 10 and uh, 20 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius is of course 10 minus 6 get 4 so the difference is 4 centimeters as the temperature increases the height of the tomato plants uh, what happens as the temperature increases? Uh, you can notice that as the temperature increases, the height of the tomato plants increases as well. So that's what you need to write here. So the height of the tomato plants increases. Part C. Carlos only uses one tomato seed for each temperature. Uses one tomato seed for each temperature. He thinks that some of these results may be wrong. What sh should he do to get a better result? Of course, for better results, you always need to think about repeating. He needs to repeat the investigation. Repeat the investigation. That's what uh, Carlos needs to do. Lastly, question number 16. Mia finds a picture on the internet. Uh, there is the picture. Um, a and B are muscles. Explain how these muscles make the leg move. Explain how the muscles make the leg move. Of course, for you to move your leg, you have to construct uh, to uh, contract your muscles and of course the muscles are attached to your bones and um, uh, you contract and relax the muscles to make uh, the bone to move so the muscles you have to explain that the muscles are attached to bones attached uh, to the bones the muscles are attached to the bones, the skeleton, and work together. The bones and the muscles work together. The muscles will contract. The muscles will contract and relax. Uh, make it the bones to move. And of course, the bone is the leg. Make it the bone. Um, to move. Full stop. Uh, friends, that's the last question. 
I hope um, this will help you as you continue revising uh, for your examination in Checkpoint uh, Year 6. And I wish you all the best. See you in my next video. Bye.